G'day there guys, hat wearing Marky is not real and he can't hurt you. Welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie. Let's get right into it. Posted by user Parami, titled, Would I be the asshole if I were to dump my boyfriend for being a snobby movie critic? My boyfriend hosts his own podcast dedicated to movies, and he even has his own studio that he's renting out so that he can record there. He has some co-hosts, legit recording equipment, and he has a decent following. I always go to the studio to just sit on the side and watch as he records, but I've noticed that he's started to become a bit different ever since the start of the podcast. On a podcast a few weeks ago, the topic was 2016 movies, as my boyfriend and his co-hosts revisited some of their favourite and least favourite films of 2016. One co-host brought up Arrival as their favourite film of 2016, and while he was talking, my boyfriend loudly says, YAWN, and he explains that he thought Arrival was boring. My boyfriend then goes into this giant rant about how he hated Arrival, calling it one of the most overrated movies of all time. He says that he looks down on people who like the movie because he claims that they think that they're smart, and he says that he's proud of himself for seeing past that movie and its faux attempts at intelligence. And whenever someone would try to change the subject, he'd just interrupt them and go right back to talking about how much he hates Arrival. Then, just a few days ago, he was recording another show, and the topic was MCU movies. My boyfriend brought up that he thinks that Age of Ultron is a hidden gem and massively overlooked masterpiece. One of his co-hosts scoffed when he said those things, and that set off my boyfriend. He started attacking the co-host for his taste in movies, and started saying stuff like, Just because I have a better understanding of the art of filmmaking, it doesn't mean that you have to be jealous of me. That was actually enough for the co-host to just walk out in the middle of the show, and my boyfriend said, That's fine, I only want to talk to true orders of film on this show. And just yesterday, I asked if we could see Shazam together, but he simply responded with, I deserve better than those DC movies. I confronted him and told him that he needs to stop acting like he's smarter than everyone over his taste in film, and he said, Truth hurts, doesn't it? And it's like this a lot. Whenever I'm watching a movie he doesn't like, he'll just scoff and say, <laughs> typical. I'm thinking of breaking up with him, but I also feel weird about dumping him over him having deferring views on film. What do you think? In the comments, Veneros8693 says, Not the asshole. I don't think you're breaking up with him over your deferring views on film, but rather his shitty attitude. Definitely. He sounds like your typical douchey snob. Enjoying movies is one thing, but jumping at the gun to be a douchebag, just for the fun of it, indicates what this individual truly is like. Also, you're allowed to break up with anyone for no reason, and it doesn't make you an asshole. I get that this is a popular narrative on this sub, but in my opinion, it's just not true. You have the right to do it, sure, but you don't get a free pass to not the asshole in all instances. A few months ago, there was a question, am I the asshole for breaking up with my boyfriend after learning he was assaulted and I now feel he is less of a man? This person is a massive asshole, quite obviously so. At first I was like, maybe it's the horrible belief that makes them an asshole, not the breaking up, but on second thought, I don't think you can separate the two. There are definitely cases like this then, when you can be a bad person for breaking up with someone, although I would still rather someone with that horrible belief got themselves away from their partner, rather than God forbid saying that you're less of a man to them, unless of course they could genuinely come to rethink everything they thought about gender, masculinity, assault, etc. But I think as a rule, it's important to say that breaking up doesn't need a good reason. In part, because in a lot of unhealthy relationships, one partner will try to guilt the other person into staying past when they want to, and that's pretty awful itself. Even when there is no manipulation like that, a lot of people stay in miserable relationships because they don't want to be mean by breaking up. But breaking up in itself isn't morally wrong, and I think saying that is important, even though there are cases when someone is being utterly horrible about it, as you pointed out. Actual Disaster Bee says, not the asshole. Your boyfriend sounds like a true douche canoe who has the faux, I'm smarter than you, and a deeper intellectual than you, bullshit about him. I don't know you, but I can safely say that you're better off without people like that in your life. 
Um, stop derailing this thread. I'm only here to talk about Rampart. <laughs> Not the asshole. This sentence right here sums it up. Quote, I confronted him and told him that he needs to stop acting like he's smarter than everyone over his taste in film, and he said, Truth hurts, doesn't it? He looks down on you and everyone else. He pissed off his own co-host to the point the co-host left. You're not breaking up with him because he's a movie snob. You're breaking up with him because he's pretentious and doesn't know how to communicate with people who have a deferring opinion. Truth hurts, doesn't it? It's going to be so good when someone uses that line after he realizes he has pushed everyone away. Yeah, I don't think you're an asshole for dumping your boyfriend after this. I think that he can't take criticism and deferring opinions at all. That really is the crux of the matter here, isn't it? Being a movie snob is one thing, but then letting that take over your entire personality and then, you know, other people being okay with you being like, no, I don't agree with you, and still being able to have a civil conversation with you, but anytime he faces any backlash in anything, he shuts down and starts throwing chairs and tables and threatening your life. Throwing personal attacks and insults at you, like, what? What the hell, man? What's wrong with you? Good for you for looking out for yourself and your own mental health by just getting rid of this guy. So please do it. And now, on to the updates. Last night was another podcast between my boyfriend and his remaining co-host. Before every actual recording of a show, they always get together in another room to briefly go over what they're going to discuss on the show, and the topic this time was Star Wars. They were going to talk about the new trailer for Episode 9, as well as rank their favorite and least favorite Star Wars films. During the pre-show meeting, I was thinking about how I was most likely going to break up with him after the show had been recorded, but another opportunity presented itself. During the meeting, my boyfriend and the co-host were talking about the Star Wars movies, and my boyfriend brought up that his favorite movie is Revenge of the Sith, and his least favorite is A New Hope. He said that Revenge of the Sith is the most epic and action-packed, whereas the original movie is too dated. His co-host disagreed, and they started talking about their opinions, which led to them talking about The Last Jedi. But then my boyfriend turns that conversation into one about another highly divisive 2017 movie, Mother starring Jennifer Lawrence. My boyfriend hailed it as one of the top five films of all time, and the most artistic film that he has ever seen. His co-host wanted to get back on track to Star Wars, but my boyfriend kept wanting to talk about Mother. The co-host responded with, Mother is an edgy high schooler's version of artistic. And that was enough for my boyfriend to go red in the face and say, well at least I try to have actual taste, unlike you. The co-host simply said, I'm done and got up and walked out of the room. My boyfriend just stood there, and then he turned on me. He said to me, what the F are you looking at? I just stood up and told him that we're done as a couple. I explained that I can't stand his shitty way of talking to people and constantly acting like he's so much better than everyone. He starts telling me that he needs me and he was planning on asking me to join the podcast, but I just told him no and walked out of the room. While I was leaving the building and getting an Uber, my boyfriend sticks his head out of the front door and screams, "Effing C-U-N-T! I just ignored him, went home, and now here I am. Update, I just wanted to let you guys know that I will no longer be giving out the link to the podcast in any more PMs. I've done that in a couple of PMs already, and my ex just texted me, telling me that the comments section in his podcast is being bombarded with trolls and harassment comments, one of which was a death threat that he is now reporting. In the comments, Ezio Altair 12 says, Looks like he went down a path you just couldn't follow. But man, driving away your co-host and significant other in the space of five minutes really reinforces that you did the right thing, OP. You brought him here to kill me! You have turned her against me. You have done that to yourself. Not the asshole. Your ex was a giant asshole. You made the right call getting away from him. I hope he enjoys his new forever alone status. He really does have a terrible attitude, especially for a podcast where he discusses deferring opinions and views. He sounds exhausting and way too sensitive. Good on you for leaving him, OP. Yeah, the edgy discussion would be fine if he could keep the emotion and personal attacks out of it. There would be nothing wrong with a podcast where one host says, I found this movie to be juvenile and pretentious, while the other says, I disagree. It broke new philosophical ground and was an entertaining romp. 
That would be more entertaining than everyone agreeing. Even some ribbing or arguments could be okay if it was all a part of the show, not deeply held personal beliefs about what's objectively better. It seems insane to me that he couldn't keep it civil. Who would want to listen to a podcast with two hosts where one expounds his opinion and the other just says, you're right, I agree. Boyfriend doesn't even sound like he likes movies. He just likes using movies to try and look superior to others, unsuccessfully at that, since he doesn't know how to disagree without coming across like a loudmouthed jerk. Movies, and art in general, should be about conversation and community, not one-upmanship. There is this weird, awful thing where people associate their opinions, which are subjective, with their self-worth, ego, self-esteem. So someone disagreeing with their opinion makes them go feral, and they go into attack mode, going directly to ad hominem attacks because they aren't cogent and coherent enough to defend their opinions with arguments and evidence. Which, defending your opinions with arguments and evidence, is essentially what a critic does? You know what, all's well that ends well in this one. He uh, really let the mask slip real quick there, didn't he? I'm wondering how everyone put up with him for so long and it took this straw to break the camel's back. Although, to be honest, this was more like a cement block going straight for the camel's back. And I feel sorry for the camel. Good on you for seeing the opportunity and absolutely running for the hills, OP. Best of luck with whatever future endeavors you get up to because having that little parasite out of your system is so much better than living with it, that's for sure. Our next post is by a deleted user, titled, How would you feel if your boyfriend, male 38, of 9 months, purchases a home and says it's for you, female 34? My boyfriend of 9 months purchased a home and said that he bought it with me in mind as we've talked about a future and wanting to have a family. We have had many serious talks about our relationship and we've both met each other's families. He previously lived in a home for several years and has always thought about changing his living situation and also wasn't sure if he even wanted to stay to live in the same city. To my surprise, he went to see a house without me knowing and put in an offer. Long story short, his offer was accepted and he's made comments about how he thought about this house for us eventually. I'm not sure how to feel about it. I'm really happy that he got a house that he really likes and at the price he got it for, but I feel that we're not there yet to move in with each other. Also, in no way did I have a say in the decision of this house or the location, so I don't think him saying that he got the house with me in mind is fair. He hasn't considered the commute for me to travel to work or anything that would be considered specifically to actually having me in mind. He bought this home one block away from his previous house as he will be renting out that home now. So this home by default is a great location for him overall. I'm not sure how to feel about his comments and his expectations with me and the house. Additionally, I am a student and the closing of his house happened to be the very busiest week of exams and assignments that I had due. We had conversations about how I couldn't help him move and there seemed to be an understanding. That week consisted of working on a presentation, studying for an exam and working on a paper. Any other free time I had, I invested in self-care, such as working out or doing yoga. However, on one of those days, I posted a selfie where I was proud to have accomplished so much in the morning before going into work, and he got extremely upset about this. He went on to say that I didn't care to help him move, and that I didn't want to help him move, essentially, and made a huge deal about it, as he bought this house with me in mind. What do you think of this? Edit to give more context. The house was bought entirely with his money. I have zero financial contribution to this. We never talked about a specific time frame when I would move in. It was a discussion about how it's something we both would want eventually. We did talk about how I would contribute when that time comes, in which I mentioned expenses such as hydro, utilities, internet, etc. I also made it clear that in no way I was expecting a free ride and not to contribute anything. That's just not my character. The selfie that was posted was a close-up shot of my face with sunglasses on and enjoying my coffee. I had a list of accomplishments of tasks I did that day and wrote it in this picture. Meal prep, check. Workout, check. Coffee, check. Sunshine, check. Great way of starting my day so far. In the comments, Bizit4 says, There are multiple red flags going on here. 
One, if he truly envisioned you two living together in this house down the line, he would have included you in the conversation or invited you to the house showings. I think what he really envisioned is having a partner. Not specifically you, but a partner. Two, the fact that he became upset when you posted about your productive morning is very worrisome. You were being smart to prioritize your education and self-care slash mental health. It takes roughly 30 minutes to one hour to work out. Did he really expect you to take that limited time to drive over, pack two to four boxes, and then leave? That's ridiculous. Three, the fact that he tried to guilt trip you when he was upset by throwing in how he envisioned the house with you in it is quite manipulative and downright juvenile. If these are the only red flags you've seen in this relationship, I would suggest counseling. If he's serious about building a future with you, then he should 100% be open to this. If he tries to dissuade you from talking to a professional, then you know he doesn't care about self-growth and in turn, growing with you. Nah, my ex used to do this shit all the time. I'm kind of wondering if this is him. <laughs> Everything he did was somehow for me, but when we split, I was left with literally nothing. No clothes, no animals, no home that he said was mine, no airstream that we both bought. All of his words are ploys and facades and distractions. Get the hell out now. I promise that you won't regret it. This is love bombing, nagging, future faking, and controlling all in one quick post. Girl, be worried and get the hell out. Monica Schmonica says, I would feel pressure to make the relationship work, even if I didn't feel it, manipulated to accept the situation before I'm ready to commit, peeved. How does he even know that I'd like the place or the neighborhood? Concerned. What if my job opportunities aren't even in this town? What if my job's a long commute and I don't want a long commute? Angry. Who the hell does he think he is buying me a prison? And alarmed. I don't like living my life according to someone else's unilateral decisions. What I would not feel is obligated to move in or to continue this relationship. Sorry, but I just laughed so hard at who the hell does he think he is buying me a prison? <laughs> As a woman in a committed four-year relationship, yes, and hilarious. Buying before marriage means in a divorce, it is his premarital assets, unless he puts her on the title. I'm not a lawyer, but economics may be his motive. Yeah, it's not looking good so far with this one. This situation certainly does have all the trappings of love bombing, nagging, future faking, and controlling. I do hope that OP is a reliable narrator in this sense because I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that uh, they have not done anything and they are not uh, putting themselves in the best light possible. Though unfortunately, I've never had the uh, unique experience of having someone say, I'm dating you and I'm buying a house with you in mind. How many people just have the money to buy a house in their own like that? This is a very niche experience if I do say so myself. But if you're looking for an asshole judgment, OP, uh, so far I'd say that you're not really the asshole. though I'm very confused about how this situation got to be where it is right now. And now, on to the update, we broke up. We basically got into a fight, and I blew up with resentment about many things. It wasn't right, but I just feel like I couldn't talk to him as I kept getting interrupted mid-sentence, denied everything I was saying, and accused of being something I'm not. I also realized that when we talked about the reality of me moving in with him, I mentioned that I could sell all my furniture, but would want and need to keep my desktop computer slash desk. His response to me was that he wouldn't let me have my own room for that and to get a laptop instead. The man has an entire room dedicated to his sneakers. When I also mentioned the commute and how I'd have to pay for parking, as I take this subway to work currently, not a big deal in comparison to paying the mortgage, but still an expense, he said there could be days he could drive me, but then followed up with, but you don't ever drive me to work. He did not buy the house with me in mind at all. It's clear that this is his house, and he wasn't going to share his space in any other way besides how he wanted it. We had plans for me to come over on a specific day, but had also fought. I admitted and apologized that I could have put my anger aside and came to help. However, I wanted reassurance that he understood that I have my own priorities, and we discussed this. 
He cannot throw it in my face and tell me that I did not meet his needs. I'm not saying, of course, that in any case I would not drop something for my partner in an emergency. I did not feel that he understood this. And when I tried to explain this, he said that I was retracting my apology. I just kept feeling constantly misunderstood and having to defend myself in this relationship with other issues as well. That was the end of that. Better to cut it off sooner than later and before taking the relationship to the next level of commitment. It definitely sucks. And I showed him this thread in which of course he was upset and he says he felt betrayed. He called me entitled as he thinks I'm saying that he bought it for me which I am not in any way. He is missing the point for this post, in which I think he doesn't want to take accountability for not acknowledging that he was wrong for throwing it in my face. The main point was guilt tripping and using the I brought it with you in mind response. Because clearly, even if the commute was not in mind, currently I live in an expensive area, so to not buy a house here is a valid point, the ability to actually live with him was not with me in mind. He really absolutely did not care about me as a person and my needs or even can understand what a real relationship is. He skimmed through all 565 comments and screenshotted the best ones that validated him and sent them to me to prove that he is a good guy. In the comments, Woman Thorned says, He's a joke. Honestly, this is not a serious person. Room for his sneakers, but she gotta buy a laptop and work on the couch? What a clown. Look, I get that sneaker collecting is a serious, albeit weird, hobby for some people, but having an entire hobby room while another occupant of the house, significant other, partner, family, roommate, doesn't matter who, does not have a dedicated workspace when they do a lot of work from home, is so utterly thoughtless. Could be a sneaker room, gaming room, sports room, man cave, whatever. Priority for rooms should be bedroom slash living space, then workspace, and then hobbies. Most sneaker rooms have the sneakers either displayed on the wall, like the shoes are on a shelf, or the containers are against the walls, so the middle part is often empty. So people will put couches and TVs. People don't just have a room filled with shoes, unless he's a hoarder. So he could have easily given her the room for her to put a desk and table. He just didn't want to share any rooms with her. I'm sure he had you in mind when buying the house. You not having a job, you not having your own money, you doing all the housework, you not having your own transportation, you being completely isolated and under his control. Well done on getting out. Just know that your comment hit me like a Mack truck. Damn, I'm an effing idiot. Yup, I just thought he was selfish and self-centered, but yeah, you can see the controlling aspect much clearer now. Did you let someone get you in that position? You can work your way back out of it. Just undo those things like a checklist. Job, car, friends, etc. And then never again allow any of your money, transportation, housing, or freedom be dependent on a man's good graces, no matter how hard they sell it. I sure did. I sure as hell did. And I didn't honestly realize how big of a hole that I put myself into until I read that guy's comment. Slowly, all of those things have been done, one by one. But I only have myself to blame. I will do exactly that, make a checklist. Damn, I'm so disappointed in myself. Hey, you're not an idiot. You were trusting the person you loved, and no, he is to blame. It's not you, you didn't lock yourself down, he did. And now on to the final update, titled, My Side. My ex made a post saying that I told her that I bought her house and has blocked me from commenting. How about I share some context? This is her post. She only showed me this a few days ago, but for the past couple of weeks, my now ex-girlfriend has been curating the truth to extract as much validation as she can from this situation and has prevented me from commenting or sharing my side. She admits that I actually said that I bought a house with us in mind. I did say that. When I first met her, I was moving away to LA. I had already lived in a home that was paid off for 12 years, but when I met her, I decided that maybe it's best to continue to build a life here, and should things work out, we could figure out a future together. 
I had been looking at the market and one day, an amazing house came on the block for 300k less than it was a month ago. I pounced and went to see it. That night I told her I saw a place, I even sent her the photos and said, I'm going to place an offer, which I did. She seemed to love the place and see how much of an upgrade it would be from my current place. This is a $2 million house with 4 bathrooms, 3 bedrooms, 2 living rooms, and most importantly, a garage, as my cars kept getting stolen since I didn't have one at my current place. There was never mention of us moving in together right away. At the time, we were together for 6 months, way too soon. We weren't even saying I love you yet, and I did say that once actually, and she just didn't return it anyways. That being said, since we spend 95% of our time sleeping at my place when we see each other once a week, I figured this would be good for us, and when it is time, we could move in together there and go from there. She loved the place. From what she said, this was supposed to be a positive. Now let's rewind though. Three months into the relationship, she asked to borrow $4,000. I was not comfortable with it, but as usual, she made herself seem so much in need. So much so that I couldn't just say no and break up with her there. But now I realize I should have. She guilted me saying that couples have to work together and be there for each other and all that jazz. The fact is, within those first three months, I had brought her to LA while I had to be there on business and the total cost of the week that she was there was around 3k. Then over Christmas, we went to another city, another 2 to 3k, as well as a Punta Cana vacation for 7k. So after all of that is when she decided to ask me, and you don't need to be a genius to realize that she chose me, because clearly she pinned me as having the money to. Had this been my wife or other long-term girlfriend, this wouldn't have been an issue, but three months in, this was a big flag, and I talked to her about it. As usual, and as a pattern throughout this relationship, she would get extremely angry, lose her cool, and make me feel bad for questioning her character. So fast forward to me actually moving into this house over a three week period, she helped nothing whatsoever, never offered, and my own family, friends, and people who were working at the house asked me about it all the time. Oh, she has school. Oh, she texts me though, and so on and so forth completely MIA until of course Friday or Saturday night where she wanted to go for dinners or go to shows. That we did of course. One day, once her exams had tailed down and she told me that she was waking up early to write a paper, I saw that she'd posted a sunshine kissed selfie saying yoga, meal prep, coffee, sunshine. And I wrote her privately, you know, I feel you could have at least offered to help in some way today. Again, she loses it and tells me, you know, you don't have to tell me something just because it bothers you. And then eventually she says, and I will never forget this ever, don't you think you're expecting a little much of me for seven to eight months of dating? I was shocked. For some reason, pressuring your boyfriend for a $4,000 loan three months in, but offering help in any way over a three week period is too much. I called it off decided I don't need her, and this relationship wouldn't work with this set of values that we don't share. A couple of days later, after trying whatever she could to flip this whole fight on me, constantly changing the goalposts as a pattern that I had identified and made her aware of repeatedly over those 7-8 to eight months, she eventually showed up unannounced, apologizing profusely, and apparently seeming to genuinely recognize that it wasn't right and she could have offered. I took some of the responsibility once she did and said that maybe I could have been more direct as to when and how. We resolved. We started to laugh again. This was a fight that we would learn from, we both said. Well, last week we disagreed for another simple issue and she blew up as she does, yelling, calling my life chaotic, calling me everything she can think of, and then says that she resents me for wanting her to help with the house when she had exams. Basically, she took back the apology fully and stormed out of the house. I did not chase her, I did not text her, and I did not want to negotiate at all anymore. The next morning, she said she acted like that because I told her that she was effed. To be honest, I don't remember saying that, but I probably did as she was having a massive blow up. I apologized for saying that she is effed up because after all, whatever I do is in my control and tried my very best to get her to see that blowing up like that is her behavior to be accountable for. 
That's when she shared the original thread. Again, no words. Shocked that for a couple of weeks in the background, she had been farming all of these comments about me, sharing our personal stuff, and curating it in a way to make herself look like, you guessed it, a victim whose boyfriend bought her a house. We met off Hinge. She asked to borrow $4,000 from me three months in, and I told her since then that it just didn't look good at all, and I'd hate to have something that I couldn't even share with my friends or family. The facts are, that she only shared as the relationship went on, that she is over 40k in debt, got fired from her nursing job because the educator had it in for her, missed out on receiving funding from the school because of their online portal, wasn't able to apply to graduate because the school didn't let her know properly, hates her parents even though they gave her a car, paid for her exams and other failed attempts at schooling in the past, told me that her last relationship was toxic, and she didn't see a future with him, but stayed with him for three years when they broke up, he threatened to jump off their building, same building that she currently lives in, where one bedroom costs more than my previous mortgage did for the 12 years that I paid it. Overall, yes, I had reason to play it slow with her. I didn't want her moving in on a technicality, or making me responsible for all of her bills, or getting trapped if things didn't work out. I didn't buy her a house, I bought my house in cash, paid in full, and she was well aware of that. I bought a house because I had settling down in my current city in mind after meeting and had hoped that it would work out. But here she is complaining about if she would have an office in it for… nursing? And even then, we never got into the nitty gritty of how it would work out except for the fact that I was obviously not going to charge her rent, but that perhaps she would pay for things like internet, maybe water bill, some food, costs of a cleaning lady, which I've already had for the past five years. A shoe room? I have 25 pairs of shoes in a closet. The spare bedroom would be for a baby's room, possibly if my future half is comfortable with that. The house has a lot of room. Discussions would be had, but I realized that discussions could never be had with her. She has rage in her mind, a wild sense of entitlement, and at present time, is currently getting evicted from her apartment and has no full-time job, but all the time in the world to make Reddit posts for validation. This problem is solved. She is not going to move in, and I am accountable for my house, and hope she becomes accountable for her house. I welcome any comments and questions, but I know that I was dealing with a highly problematic person who will never truly realize her ways. In the comments, Tipsana says, A relationship that is less than 9 months old should not be this difficult. Some 20 plus year marriages with kids have less drama than this here. There is no winner here. They are both better off without each other. Yeah, but we're better off if they stay together, so no decent people have to be dragged into a relationship with one of these melons. I've read that there is a German proverb that we should all rejoice when two unpleasant people marry each other, because it keeps them from making two pleasant people unhappy. I know a couple that reminds me of that. I imagine it's much pithier in German. Well, uh, given the full context, I've decided that I don't like either of them. <laughs> I don't like either of them either. This was such a long and drawn out story and I've decided that I'm not taking any sides because they both suck. I feel like there is so many twisted truths going on, so much that's left out, so many missing, missing reasons, and just so many lies at every step. Like it's so obvious that both of them are lying about the situation to make each other look good. I'm glad that they have each other, I hope that the breakup isn't for too long, and I really want them to get back together so that we don't have to deal with their bullshits. Who's with me on that one, huh guys? Anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's episode, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!